Alright guys, we've made it to the weekend and we've got some big fixtures coming up. Let's jump into it. Guys, we're back to another video on the channel. Plenty to discuss today. We will, of course, be going over all of my score predictions for the weekend's action and also digesting all the games that went on in midweek. Get all your thoughts on those in the comments down below. As always, get your score predictions down there as well. And if you do go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content. Apart from that, though, Let's jump into these. So starting out at Ewood Park, we go to Blackburn up against QPR. The fixture list really is relentless on Blackburn at the moment. And midweek, honestly, couldn't have gone, gone much more wrong for them. And um, They had that penalty against Sheffield United, which they failed to convert. Sheffield United then get a last-minute winner against them. QPR end up winning their game. Huddersfield turned their game around as well. And the, re the real worry for Blackburn at the moment is the goals and how much they've actually dried up. Um, you know, it's now five games they've gone in the league without scoring. Uh, ben Breton Diaz being out injured is obviously having an influence on them. But to be fair, in the first half of the season, I do think they were scoring goals at a rate which was perhaps a little bit unsustainable for the quality of chances they were actually creating. They were, I think, by far and away the most clinical side in the first half of the season. But if you're not creating high quality chances enough, that's always going to catch up to you. It's something you know very similar we saw happening to Reading a couple of years ago when they were at the top of the championship, sort of scoring goals at an um, unsustainable rate. And at the moment, and without Burton Diaz going into this fixture, I think that QPR are probably fancying their chances. Massive win for QPR in midweek as well after they went down to 10 men, had to play all that second half down. Uh, Blackpool got that equalised, but QPR showed that character to go ahead and sniff out the winner. So for a score prediction in this one, I'm going to go 1 0 QPR. I just don't think Blackburn have much going for them in the final third at the moment, with FIFA going for a 1 1 draw. Next up, then, and to Oakwell, we go to Barnsley up against Middlesbrough, and finally, we're seeing signs of life and on a little bit more of a consistent basis now from Barnsley. It was a great win for them in midweek, albeit against a whole side who themselves are badly out of form at the moment, but Barnsley massively needed that. Their two wins in their last three matches, albeit they've still got a a lot of ground to claw back on the teams above them. I think that the deficit sits at about nine points now that Barnsley need to make up. But at least they've started to show a little bit of something and they've got a little bit more about them in the final third. Because I think we forget at times just how much talent individually is actually in that Barnsley squad. You know, Carlton Morris is a good player. Callum Styles is a very good player. Helix is a good player. I like the goalkeeper as well. So it was all about sort of harnessing that because once... Barnsley got into that sort of losing um, rhythm. Confidence can be stripped away from you very fast um, in a league as competitive as the championship. Things won't be easy in this one, though. Middlesbrough got a good win in midweek, turned things around in the second half against West Brom. Tavernier very much being the main man in orchestrating that comeback. And I think I'm just going to edge Middlesbrough for this one. If Barnsley do pull a result off here then maybe, just maybe, their survival bids back on. But for this one, I'm going to go 2-1 Middlesbrough with FIFA going 1-0 Barnsley. Next up then to Birmingham up against Huddersfield. Birmingham, bit of a strange game for them in midweek, to be honest with you, because for a lot of it, it looked like they had the better of, you know, the ball, the possession, the chances going forward against Reading, but things just weren't quite clicking for them in the final third. And a John Swift and Lucas Jow double up, um, in the end, got the better of them. Going up against Huddersfield in this one's going to be difficult. Huddersfield... Great win in midweek coming from behind against Cardiff. Credit to Carlos Corbran and those second half changes. You know, um, Josh Caroma and Jordan Rhodes both coming off the bench combined for the equaliser. And then the scenes when they went on to get that win looked absolutely fantastic. And there just seems to be that sort of never say die attitude, that belief about Huddersfield at the moment. Defensively overall, they've been pretty resolute lately as well. So they're going to make it difficult for Birmingham in this game. I'm going to go 2 1 Huddersfield. I'm going to back the unbeaten streak to continue with FIFA going at 1-0 Huddersfield. Next then to Bloomfield Road for Blackpool up against Reading. Blackpool quite a disappointing performance in midweek having played the majority of that game against QPR with QPR down to 10 men they couldn't really capitalise on that obviously Josh Bowler got the equaliser late on into the game but to lose that one was quite disappointing and arguably as poor as we've seen Blackpool all season really. Going up against the Reading side who seem to have a new lease of life about them at the moment having won their last two matches you know the form book between these two has certainly flipped in its head in the last couple of weeks. Reading not as convincing, I thought, in midweek in terms of the performance, but that's not really important at the moment. What's important for Reading is results on the board, and they have 
to be fair to them, managed to establish a little bit of a gap between themselves and the bottom three. Uh, Zhao and Swift on the score sheet once again for Reading in midweek, and Reading had that advantage of probably having the best you know, individuals in that sort of bottom group um, of teams at the bottom of the table, whereby Swift and Zhao can turn it on like that and win a game for them. And could that be the case in this one? Possibly. I'm going to go 2-1 Reading in this game, with FIFA going for a 1-1 draw. I'm sure Paulins being black at, back at Bloomfield Road will get an interesting reception. But uh, yeah, there just seems to be something about Reading and going forward and scoring goals at the moment. Next then to Bournemouth up against Stoke. Stoke really needed a win in midweek against Luton. They now find themselves nine points off the top six and a playoff finish at this point looks really quite unrealistic for Stoke unless they were to have this ridiculous turn of fate, which I just don't see happening. I think they're too inconsistent of a side um, to make up that ground on the teams above them. Uh, they will still have results throughout the season and performances, I'm sure, but ultimately, especially if they fall to a bottom half finish this season, that is really quite damning, I feel like, on O'Neill there. Um, and maybe even his future will be called into question. It was a terrific goal by uh, Lewis Baker in midweek, but that didn't really cover the cracks over what was a really quite turgid performance. Uh, tough game this one going up against the Bournemouth side who will be fresh you'd imagine having not played in midweek. They've strung together some decent results recently themselves. Three on the bounce I think they probably make it four in this one. I'm going to go 3-1 Bournemouth in this game with FIFA going 2-0 Bournemouth. Next then we head over to Wales for Cardiff up against Fulham. Cardiff losing in midweek um, albeit against a decent Huddersfield side who turned that game around um, in the second half. Cardiff who still find themselves with quite the comfortable cushion over the bottom three. I think it's a 15-point gap they've got at the moment, and um, thanks to some of those wins that they've strung together in the past couple of months. So no real danger of Cardiff slipping much further down the table, albeit this is going to be a pretty difficult game against a Fulham side who is fit and firing at the moment. Mitrovic with another brace in midweek to continue now to pull clear as the Championship's all-time top scorer. 33 for the season now, and he's still got so much time to go ahead and continue continue to add to that tally. How many goals do you think he's realistically going to get this season? Because whatever it's going to be, it's going to end up being ridiculous. I think I've got to back Fulham for this one. I'm going to go 2-1 away from home to Fulham. FIFA's going to go for a 1-1 draw there. Next then to Coventry up against Preston. Looking forward to this one. It'll be the first time that I've ever been to Coventry. Not done this away day before. But uh, yeah, two fairly evenly matched sides at the moment. Coventry got a great win in midweek to go ahead and keep their playoff hopes alive. Gierkerez with the late goal against Bristol City. Gustavo Hamer pulling the strings from midfield with a couple of assists in that one. Preston had a draw in midweek. 0-0 against Nottingham Forest. And to be honest, I thought we should have won that game. I thought we were by far and away the better side in that one. Um, certainly had the better chances going forward and it was probably one of the most sort of one-sided nil-nils that I've ever seen. Uh, Cameron Archer had the golden chance to go ahead and put us 1-0 up but he couldn't finish on that occasion but I'm sure he'll be back this weekend to his best and one goal either way wouldn't surprise me in this one and um, I actually think that under Ryan Lowe so far we've actually been probably better away from home than we have at home. I think that these away games tend to suit us a little bit more when there is a little bit more space in behind to get into and stuff like that so for a prediction in this one, I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. And FIFA's going to agree with me for that one. After that, we go to Kenilworth Road for Luton up against Derby. Tough game here for Derby to be going into because Luton had a brilliant win themselves in midweek. And those are the sort of games for Luton, you know, up against the side like Stoke away in midweek that if you want to make it in, making it into the top six, you need to be sort of beating those teams that you're sort of rubbing shoulders with in a similar part of the table. And they did so in really convincing fashion. I thought they were, you know, by far and away um, worth the three points in this one and leaves them on the cusp of the top six at the moment and with a decent opportunity to win this one against Derby. Derby obviously had quite a difficult game in midweek against Millwall and um, things seemed to get away from them in that one. Things improved a little bit in the second half and they had a little bit more impetus but ultimately left it a little bit too late to go ahead and get back into the game when I think that um, first goal for Derby came in about that 87th minute didn't it? I think they were lacking that bit of sharpness that, that 
maybe Tom Lawrence provides and the fact that he'll be missing for this game as well is still the blow for Derby. So score prediction, I'm just going to edge Luton, I think, for a 2-1 home victory. Thief has gone 1-0 Luton, although the games that I most expect Luton to win, they end up losing, so who knows. Next up then to the then for Millwall up against Sheffield United. Both these sides winning in midweek. Millwall got that 2-1 victory over Derby away from home. We can see just how much of a difference Jed Wallace makes to this Millwall side. In that period that he was sort of out of the team from and since he's been back, Millwall, in terms of their attacking output, have been so much better and he was really bossing things, particularly in that first half against Derby. Up against the Sheffield United side in this one, though, who are on a decent unbeaten run at the moment and that last-minute winner from Ben Davis could make absolutely all the difference in the playoff picture come the end of the season. Really happy for Ben Davis. He's had a bit of a frustrating time, I think, since leaving Preston. Obviously, got that move to Liverpool and then loan move to Sheffield United, but he's never really been able to establish a run of games and get some proper consistency behind them because injuries have sort of tweaked away at him and things like that, but that last-minute goal there and the scenes at full-time looked absolutely fantastic at Sheffield United, but Millwall will make things difficult, and I think I'm edging towards a draw in this one. I'm going to go for a 1-1. Thief has gone 1-0 Sheffield United. Could definitely see them edging it, but Millwall no mugs at the moment. Next up then to the city ground for Nottingham Forest up against Bristol City. Bristol City losing in midweek to a late goal to Victor Jukerez, and that pretty much has summed up Bristol City's season so far, really. They seem to win the game, lose the game, win the game, lose the game at the moment, and the fact that that goal came so late on um, really puts the cherry on top. Nottingham Forest, I got to see them live in action in midweek at Deepdale and didn't think that Forest offered that much in terms of an attacking output. I thought that tactically Ryan Lowe probably got that game spot on against Forest. We completely nullified their wing backs from creating much moving forward and getting up the pitch and for a lot of it they were sort of camped out in a half really but defensively they were very good for that game to be fair to them and they sort of limited us to only a few clear cut chances but uh, yeah an interesting game nonetheless and I'd imagine that Forrest will have a little bit more endeavour and um spark about them in the final third in this one against the Bristol City defence who does like to concede goals so for a score prediction in this one I'm going to go for a 2-1 Forest home victory I think they will be a little bit more courageous in how they play this one Thief has gone for a 1-1 draw next then to Peterborough up against Hull now Grant McCann has recently been announced as the new Peterborough manager first game up against his former side Hull this just seems set up for Grant McCann to get off to a winning start, doesn't it? With the way that Hull are going at the moment, the fact that they're now winless in six, Peterborough obviously had quite a difficult game in midweek against Fulham. If Peterborough managed to pull a result out the bag in this one, then who knows? At the moment, the points difference between Peterborough and Hull is 13 points. If Peterborough win this game, that'll be cut down to 10 points. And Peterborough also have two games in hand on Hull at the moment, which if they win, that'll only be cut down to four points. Maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, as at the moment, it does look more than likely that Peterborough will be playing in League One next season. But from the outside looking in, I think that Grant McCann, is quite a sensible appointment from everyone that they were being linked to. I think that Grant McCann was probably the best suited to this job at the moment. And Hull, um, yeah, seemed to be in free fall at the moment. Without a win in their last six matches, really poor performance in midweek against Barnsley. And for a score prediction in this one, I'm going to back McCann to get off to a winning start. I'm going to go 2-1 Peterborough with FIFA going 1-0 Hull. And then for our last game this weekend, we've got West Brom giving up against Swansea. West Brom, another poor performance, particularly in that second half against Middlesbrough. Um, another defeat for them, which ultimately leaves them seven points off the top six with Sheffield United, who are currently in sixth place, having a game in hand on them. It looks increasingly more unlikely that West Brom will be putting up a top six charge um, this season, which is really quite disappointing. If you'd have said sort of two, three months into the season that by February, West Brom would find themselves seven points below Sheffield United, given the starts to the season that both those sides have. I mean, it get, I guess it shows the unpredictable nature and how quickly things can actually flip in the championship. Having said that, I do think this is a decent opportunity for Bruce to pick up something in this game. Swansea at the best of times have been pretty unreliable away from home. They do tend to concede quite a few goals on the road as well. The last game they had away being a prime example of that and um, Swansea weren't in action in midweek so maybe have a bit of freshness about them but for a score prediction surely West Brom have to win sooner rather than later I'm gonna go 
2-0 West Brom. FIFA's going 1-0 West Brom, but I'm not massively confident in saying that. But guys, there we have it. Those are my score predictions heading into the weekend. Some massive games going on both at the top and bottom of the championship. As always, make sure to get your thoughts on everything going on in the championship in the comments down below. Apart from that though, guys, that will not wrap it up. So thank you very much for watching. If you did go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do subscribe for some regular championship content. Apart from that, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.